This lesson is about what I call the art of keyword choice. I wish it were a science. I wish there was a nice algorithm I could give you for this. But here's the point of the lesson. How do you choose the words, the right words, the keywords that go into a query that make up a really effective query for Google? This is really one of the things we have to learn in this class is that sometimes you have to do a couple different queries in a row to zero in on exactly the key idea. You don't want to do something totally off topic. You want to sort of stay in the middle. This class is really about how to do that. The first thing you have to think about is think about what it is you're trying to find. I know this is crazy. You should obviously think about it. But I find that lots of people just type in whatever pops into their brain the very first moment they start thinking about it. Instead, I want you to think, how can we focus in on just the key ideas of the query? One way to do that is choose words that you think will appear on the page which is the perfect answer to what it is you're looking for. How would someone else write about it? And that's my third idea. How do you put yourself in the mindset of the author of those words that will appear on the perfect web page? So let me give you an example. If you're doing a Google search for, say, some information about, say, your kid broken arm, would you do a search like busted arm? Probably not. Look at these results. Ben and his busted arm. And on a Flickr photo sharing, it's going to be a picture. The rest you see YouTube videos may not be what it is you really want if you're really looking for medical information about broken arms. What you might want to do instead is replace that query with a more appropriate word choice like say even something as simple as broken arm. You could use fracture, you could use another sort of medically appropriate term, but what you're really trying to understand is that the words you choose will influence the kinds of results you get. So you don't want to be like the kid I saw in the sixth grade who was trying to find out information about the ecology of Costa Rica jungle ecosystems by doing the query sweaty clothes. It just doesn't work. Instead, what you want to do is to think about how would you choose an idea, the words, the concepts that get you to exactly what you want to understand. That is, if someone says to you, I heard there was some old city in San Francisco Bay, what was it called? You probably don't want to do a query like this one. What was the old city in San Francisco Bay called? Here's why. You see the results here? When you do a query like, what was the old city in San Francisco Bay called? You're using a lot of words to describe a very simple concept. Those extra words that are sort of outside the actual central idea of the query end up bringing in all kinds of results that may or may not be relevant to what you're doing. So what you're doing, in essence, is getting off topic. Let's try a different way of thinking about the same problem. Same question. I heard there was an old city in San Francisco Bay. What was it called? This query is a little bit better. It focuses on just the key idea, Old City, San Francisco Bay. So here we've gotten rid of the extra words that kind of the English language text that surround the way you normally think about it. And look at the results. Well, you know, they're not all that much better. What's going on? Turns out that sometimes you actually need to sort of explore a little bit. And this is one of the key ideas of this entire class. Sometimes you have to do a search by actually looking around a little bit. I know, a radical idea. Sometimes you have to do one, two, maybe even three queries to get to exactly the center of the idea you want to understand. So what I would have done in this case was, with that same goal in mind of trying to find some old city in San Francisco Bay, what's it called? Another way to phrase that would be to say, ghost town, San Francisco Bay. Old city is one way of saying it, but it's pretty generic words. You're not using anything that's very specific. So when we do this query, look what happens. We end up with some results that are exactly on target, very precise. So here we see the very number one result. The very first result says that Drawbridge, California is a ghost town right on the bay. South San Francisco Bay, there's this beautiful ghost town, Drawbridge. Let's compare all three of these results side by side. The one on the left is the very first query we did. What was the old city in San Francisco Bay called? And if you look at the first result, it's a Wikipedia result for 
guess what? San Francisco. That's the most salient, the most important, the most common phrase, two-word phrase in that query. So San Francisco naturally comes to the top. San Francisco Bay is another common phrase. History of San Francisco, because we use the word old, we use the word city, you can see that's kind of where those results are coming from. Now compare that with a second column, which was that second query we made, which was to old city San Francisco Bay. You can see the first three results are exactly the same. And it's only when you get to number four here that you see that we've got some other one, uh, this case about earthquake safety in San Francisco. And on the left, with that other longer query, we have something about the founding of San Francisco. Again, these are not great on-topic target queries. So when we substitute now over here with Ghost Town, San Francisco Bay, the very first result has exactly what it is we're looking for. And you can see all the rest of those results are exactly on target. So when you do a query like this, keep the query short, keep it on topic, try to keep the words that you would expect to find in exactly the perfect results page.